Hey, Mark. How are you, Steve? Ah, uh, what can I say? I'm really well. Say anything. You? <laughs> yeah, we, we pretty much do around here, don't we? What's our hymn for today? Oh, dear. Lutheran Service Book 851. Hmm. Lord of glory, you have bought us. I always thought it was brought us. Ah. But that's because I didn't always pay attention to this hymn because there's a lot of you, thick you stuff. You get into hot water when you remove letters out of words. You or know? add some, yeah. That's right. Um, we won't go down that path. It's a thick text, this one, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So the theme for the day, of course, is uh, whoever would be first must, must be, be last, last and, and servant, servant to all. all. It's all about helping and serving others. Right. Um, I would say it's half about our helping and serving others. Okay. And then it's half about our being helped and served by the one who helps and serves all people, which oh. is Jesus. It's Jesus. So there's right. a faith and then the love. Faith is completed in love. We believe in Jesus, and this leads to our being able to serve and, and love people. We never have just half of that, at least not for long. Right? You can't have love without faith. You can't have faith without love. And so it's really important that the Lord of glory has bought us with his love. Got it. Right? His own lifeblood as the price. Yeah. And in this way, we can give our lives to others, for others. What else do you like about this hymn? Well, I wouldn't say I like it necessarily, but it was confusing. Is the third verse, there's this, there's this part about halfway through where it says, uh, Can it be, O gracious master, that you deign for alms to sue? You know what that means? These are weird words. <laughs> the <laughs> meaning of this third verse, actually, this is kind of the one that I want to pull out in the sermon on Sunday because let me I'm just read the whole verse right okay uh, so that it makes sense wondrous honor you have given to our humblest charity so the littlest things that we do Jesus has promised that these are actually he honors these incredibly right there's mm -hmm. great glory in giving a little bit of something to a little little person right in your own mysterious sentence you have done it all to me so you remember when Jesus separates out the sheep and the goats, right? It's that judgment chapter in Matthew. I think it's in Matthew. Maybe it's in Luke. And he says, anything that you've done to the least of these, you've done it to me. So anything that we do for someone, Jesus says, this is mysterious, but it's powerful. He says, you're doing it to him. He's present with us in our poor, in our, in our, our humble, in those that you serve and those that you're merciful toward. And then just as much as he's present in the person who's able to, to meet needs in his name. So that's what that first part means. And then we get to that line that's really thick. Can it be, O gracious master, that you deign for alms to sue? That you deign, lower yourself to sue for alms, to ask for our help? Could it be that Jesus needs our help? Hmm. But this is one of the, you know, just the surpassing awesome mysteries of the gospel and who our God is. Our God lowers himself uh, to this place of humility so that he can redeem us, so that he can invite us to love. Because we're too busy doing all this stuff that's for ourselves. Right. How are we going to be saved? We're going to be saved by a God who's willing to be less instead of more. And um, this is kind of going to be the message of the sermon, right? There's, there's two kinds of theology in the world. There's the theology of glory that's the theology that says, hey, God loves you and wants you to be great. So you go ahead and make yourself great. You make other people great, we'll all be great together. And, and buy the pastor's book so you can make him a millionaire too. Oh, Hey, that would be good. <laughs> um, but what would be much better, in fact, ironically, counterintuitively, is what we call the theology of the cross. Right. Uh, where we're willing to lay down ourselves for one another. This is what a marriage is, right? An unchristian marriage says... Uh, hey, you be good for me and I'll be kind of good for you and mm. we can have a partnership and we'll help each other out. A Christian marriage says, I will empty myself for you. You right. empty yourself for me. Yeah. And, um, and then this last line then, saying by your poor and needy, give as I have given to you. So again, Jesus is inviting us in the poor and the needy to give as he's given to us. Well, it certainly seems timely that we're talking about this uh, with current events, with yeah. the activities going on here. Hurricane uh, Florence. Aftermath with Hurricane Florence, yeah. Um, I mean, Charlotte didn't really get hit that badly. We complained around here because we lost internet and, uh, you know, a tree limb f or two fell. But really seeing the damage and the impact of the rest of the state has been, has been very um, sobering. This kind of seems like maybe this ought to be the battle cry to go and, to go and physically help the people who need this, you know, the, the help in, in the communities yeah. that have been seriously affected by the flooding and, and so forth. The Lord is present when we do. He is, yeah. yeah, and give thanks that we can do these things. Thank you, Lord, and thanks to you for listening, and have a good day in the Lord. Mm -hmm.